Well, hello and welcome to Fox News Tonight. I'm Will Kane. Now, you might have missed it over the weekend, what with the revelation yesterday that the FBI attempted to swing a presidential election. But on Saturday, Joe Biden gave one of the most divisive speeches in a generation by a sitting president. Giving the commencement address at Howard University, Biden said the following. Racism has long torn us apart. It's a battle that's never really over. To stand up against the poison of white supremacy as I did my inaugural address to a single out as the most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. White supremacy. Does Joe Biden mean it? Does he believe white supremacy is the greatest threat to America? If he does, there can be no greater sign of incompetence. The global rise of the Chinese Communist Party, unsustainable and unfettered illegal immigration, which, by the way, you cannot have a welfare state and open borders. You will cease to exist. The world on the brink of nuclear war in Ukraine and Joe Biden's own personal boogeyman, Vladimir Putin. If he believes white supremacy is the greatest threat to democracy, we should immediately invoke the 25th Amendment, impeach him as a national security threat. And someone, for the love of God, will you warn all those people of color who are illegally smuggling themselves into America, screaming asylum that they just snuck into Nazi Germany? Seriously, if it is so bad, why does everyone want to come here? If Joe Biden thinks the biggest threat to America is white supremacy, he should, again, immediately launch a congressional inquiry tomorrow into the most racist statements made by a living president. We got the first sort of mainstream African American yes. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and a nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook. You cannot go to a 7 Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. To fully, I'm not joking. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. That's stunning. And that today is your savior from white supremacy. No, the president who was mentored by a member of the KKK doesn't believe any of what he told those students at Howard. It's a pander, and it's a pander so obvious and naked that he had to immediately point out that he knows the emperor has no clothes. I'm not saying this because I'm at a black HBCU. I say wherever I go. I'm not saying it just because I'm here. Now, this is a strong content, contrast to what Joe Biden promised four years ago. He promised then, if you'll remember, to be the uniter in chief, to bring us together. Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this, bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. And I ask every American to join me in this cause. We must end this uncivil war the pits red against blue. We can do this if we open our souls instead of hardening our hearts. Open our souls instead of hardening our hearts to end this uncivil war. But then, after that speech, something happened. Joe Biden failed. He failed in every way possible. Inflation has hit record highs because of record spending and money printing. Regional banks are collapsing. Energy costs are through the roof. Around six million migrants have crossed our border. We're on the verge of what some say will be the worst recession since the 80s. And the world is again on the brink of nuclear war. And what do you do when you fail? You blame. So he first villainized the unvaccinated. Then he told us the real problem with the world was those free breathers who won't wear masks. He said it was Republicans who want to take away your right to vote. How about gun nuts, who, by the way, are those that legally buy their guns? MAGA radicals. And then the generalized catch-all umbrella term of extremists. By the time Biden arrived at the announcement for his re-election campaign a few weeks ago, he'd long given up being a uniter, saying extremists are lurking around every corner and lining up to take our freedoms. Where once he said, if you don't vote for him, you're not black. Now he says, if you don't vote for him, you don't care about our freedoms. And with their marching orders, here now comes team Biden to scold America. Extremist so-called leaders in Georgia, so-called leaders, extremist leaders, these extremists have made it more difficult to vote 
Extremists in the Georgia State Legislature went so far as to limit drop boxes. Extremists proposed and passed laws to attack the freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body. These so-called leaders, these extremists, extremists state by state made it legal to open carry a gun without even a permit or background check. These extremists dare claim to be for life. These extremists have a plan. That was just one speech. What do you see? Extremists. Where? Everywhere. What do they look like? They look like they disagree with me. And they look like white supremacists. Is that us? Is that America? Are we a nation of bigots? It's not my life. I doubt it's yours. Now, we play in the same sports teams. We take our kids to practices. We worship. We go to parent-teacher night. And we largely love one another regardless of race. I think it's actually undeniable that we are living in the least racist moment in human history. And within that context, we're in the least racist country on the planet. And we are almost at the least racist moment in the entirety of our own personal American history. I say almost because take a look at this Gallup poll. In June 2008, just months before Barack Obama won the presidential election, nearly 70 percent of Americans believed race relations were somewhat or very good. By Obama's last year, the number of Americans who had a positive view of race relations dropped by nearly 20 points, including less than half of black adults. Additionally, the number of black Americans who worry a great deal about race went from around 40 percent during Obama's presidency to nearly 70 percent today. The number of white Americans who worry about race nearly doubled in that time span as well. Between the last year of Trump's presidency and the first year of Biden, the number of Americans who worried a great deal about race increased from 31% to almost 50%. If you did a word count, by the way, for the New York Times, for example, on the word racist over the last 15 years, what you would see, one of those word bubbles is an absolute explosion. All the race mongering, all the division, it's working. Just over a decade ago, we were headed to that moment of judging each other according to the content of our character and not the color of our skin. But since that time, politicians have used our worst instincts to pit us against one another for their own political gain. They are happy to tear apart our carpool in exchange for your support at the voting booth. Telling lies, creating boogeymen, reinforcing tribes. Joe Biden will divide us. He'll tear us down. He'll fill us with hate for his own gain for power. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.